Dad was the first person I called when I had the idea of Halter. Oh, I think for the first like four years of Halter, he was like, that's not going to work. I think even when it was kind of working on his father, he was like, it's not going to work. <laughs> for sure. That was it. Like the commitment levels were just incredible. The cows were in this paddock and he was sneaking down that hill and trying to get closer and closer. And then he, you'd try and call out, but try and make sure that they didn't know where the call came from. We've got an analog farm with digital cows. <laughs> I tell you what, I've seen, I think it was like three and a half, four thousand moves now. I just never get tired of seeing it. And it still feels like magic. Like the, the fact that there's nothing stopping them. I was plowing actually at the time, and this was like a shitty old plow, like a, like a four row plow, so not the fastest thing in the world. And we, it kept breaking it. That was also why it was taking so long. And it'd be like 3 a.m. by myself, picking up like a piece of the plow with the chain and taking it back to the workshop to like weld this like, pretty much try and jimmy this thing back together to like just finish the job. There was just endless, you're always trying to like solve problems. Farmers are so good at solving problems, like, and just making do with what they got. And I remember finishing that like 30, 34, 36 hour stint, going home. Yeah, like eight hours later, I was back in a different tractor on our other place. Not doing a 36 hour stint, but doing like another 12 hour shift. And it's, I used to love it. That was good. It's like, you know, when you're a kid, that's fun. If you know how like, visceral the pain is or how like important that problem is to solve coming up with the solution is more exciting because you you, you have a feeling of like what it's worth Five, four, some of my friends at uni three, that were talking about this like crazy company trying to launch rockets in new zealand and <clears throat> as an engineer that's obviously pretty exciting I'm like okay rockets that seems cool and so i put on a suit it's totally not the right thing to do but i put on a suit and just knocked on the front door someone's like how can I help you? I'm like, oh, I want a job. He asked me like, okay, and are you, do you like to work hard? And I've obviously been doing like 100 hour weeks on farm. And I was like, yep. <laughs> like, it's, I just totally didn't know how to, how to interview and uh, didn't get the job. Then Peter Vett came to speak at university. There was free pizza, which was a draw card. And then I went along to get a job. So it was my third time being like, all right, I'm going to get a job at Rocker Lab. And I like cornered Pete afterwards and ultimately that's how I got my job at Rock Lab. The thing that really surprised me was this notion that this company existed to chase a mission that was crazy. Like just even half the people there were like, this is crazy. Peter Wick would say, everyone calls you crazy until you do it and then they call it vision. And that's maybe the best way to summarize my like one year at or my time at, at Rock Lab. Definitely the beginning of Holter had you know, a healthy dose of naivety. But the original plan was we we're going to raise some money, we were going to hire like a world class team, and then we were going to change, you know, farming. And we're like two 22 year olds with, you know, why the fuck is anyone going to give us money to start with? Like, no one wants to work for us. Anyway, we were trying to work out what's about the size of a cow's neck. And it turned out to be, yeah, like your, just your black dress belt. And so I think I, I owned one belt at the time. I was a uni student. And we just used that. We 3D printed these boxes. We put them on this, on this uh, my dress belt. And after a while, when we just had one speaker on the collar, we worked out that this cow would always just turn one way. So every time she, Twinkle at the time, every time Twinkle would like walk into a virtual boundary, this is when it was starting to work, she'd always turn away from the sound. And so that was like, oh shit, okay, we're gonna need to put a speaker on both sides. That's pretty crazy. That is crazy. It's probably some of our, some of our best engineering. Boom, still goes. This was literally someone's sustainment lunchbox that they had at work and we couldn't find a container. So we just like stole their lunchbox, sustainer, shout out New Zealand brand. 
you could basically radio control to a collar. You could um, give them cues, left and right uh, audio, ramping intensity, and really uh, work with them physically in person, understand what worked and what didn't. So this was our, a very early version of the collar. Um, this allowed us to kind of train uh, individual cows in the, right at the start. Um, it was a little bit flimsy, very thin walls. I think you can see like pretty damaged and broken here. Um, and so we tried to kind of make a little bit of a gruntier collar. We built 15 of these and only four, I think worked at any given time on a cow. So we decided to kind of move to the production series of collars. Um, we made about 50 of these, super expensive, about $1,000 each. Uh, and this one was a complete disaster. They would literally snap in half. And ultimately, we took these all off of after about two weeks and moved on um, to hopefully something that would work, which was this production two collar, P2. Um, this thing is basically indestructible as a result of that other one. All of our early customers would have been on the P2 collar. Um, and this thing ultimately did a really good job, but wasn't a smooth ride those first few farms. Oh, P2. P2 was a four solar panels, this monstrosity thing that was a total of six kilos. I, I don't know if the trailer's still around, but it was like the command center that arrived on farm. It had everything. And we had um, somebody built a charging rack for collars. So anything that didn't charge fully with the solar, we could swap them out, put it onto this one that had charged. Because they were here early in the morning. There must have been other farms where they would have almost stayed the night out there probably, especially if it was remote-ish. Did it happen? I'm pretty sure it would have. Yeah. Shit, sometimes the towers would go down and I'd have Aaron, Aaron would ring me at two in the morning and he'd be, I'm just coming out, I'm just gonna, we've had a tower go down, you won't be able to get the cows out in the morning and you know, he'd come out at two in the morning and fix it up recharge it or whatever the problem was. Anything that wasn't quite going right, they were there in a heartbeat to try and fix it because you couldn't have any downtime. We had to just keep going. We knew that as one of the early farmers that we would be involved with uh, some of the developmental phase, which is a nice way of saying it, shit breaking and failing and that. Um, but we were all up for it, um, as were the other earlier farmers as well. The lust would just be so long like of everything that didn't work and everything that broke. And I think if we knew uh, what we know now when we first started out, uh, I'm not sure we would have been quite so optimistic about it. Looking back, they were total, those early customers were like total heroes. When you give a farmer a tool, they always work out like however many different ways they can use that tool to, to do a job. And yeah, Holter was no different at that point. They were using it in like all these ways we'd never really dreamed of um, and giving us, because it's a core to the operation, they were always giving us feedback. You built it in like a day, eh? To be able to set the time that the cows leave the paddock, so you could set it the night before, and then you could just wake up and the cows had left themselves, you didn't have to command them at the time. And then like, yeah, two days later, it was, oh, there you go, there's that feature. And that's the amazing thing about Halter, is because everything can be updated over um, software updates, things can happen really fast. Yeah, I think if you were to count every single revision, major, minor, um, of all the electronics we'd, and all the various kind of versions within that, I think we'd be sitting at hundreds of, of different iterations of, of collar. We got to our fourth generation of hardware, a radical redesign from the ground up. This thing is 75% less power, 75% um, less weight. Yeah, this, uh, this collar probably changed everything for Holter. Yeah, that, that was the big, the big unlock. That was like the the final moment, the last piece of the puzzle for Holter to really, really take off. And this thing came along, which was just extraordinary. I've got, I've got a saying with my wife, she doesn't like it, which is beauty is function. There is something just, so, and if it's in black, even better. There was talk of an LED and it was kind of like, yeah, yeah that'd be awesome. There's a lot of excitement around the product and probably I think a lot of people just wanted to be on the journey. They, a lot of farmers were like, hey, this is a company trying to do stuff in an industry that, that matters and we want to be part of that. It was a crazy like first year of, of scaling for sure. The more farms we could bring on, the better for the product. That was a crazy journey in itself. We were scaling so like incredibly fast that 
we couldn't hire fast enough, we couldn't scale our like processes and systems fast enough. You go from doing one farm every three months to like, you know, one every three weeks, one every three days, to one a day, three a day, like, and so a lot of things in that system break. Yeah, there are definitely points where you've got a new starter every day. Um, there have been points where there's been more new people than there was old people. That's super scary. Probably spend as much time thinking about culture as we do thinking about our product. And that's intentional. There's some times when the answer is just raw hard work. It is just, it's a question of like, how many hours can you do? And when you're calibrating collars, it's just hours of effort. Um, a lot of problems are like that. And so you need to be able to do that. We've never had the luxury of hiring like a person per problem. <laughs> like you would need thousands of people and same as farming. Um, obviously for people to buy Halter in the beginning, they didn't believe it worked. So they needed to see it. We're like, okay, how are we gonna, you know, show them? And so we found, we went and got like an old calf shed, um, literally, you know, wood chip on the floor and, and it's probably like a hundred years old. Like, okay, we'll convert this into some type of shed that we can like, you know, make a coffee in and, and actually like sit around a table. And so drag the whole team down to farm, call it a working bee. I think it was a two day thing as well. Everyone just getting random jobs they've never done before. Yeah, people on the roof. I think it was like a software engineer and yeah, maybe someone from finance like patching holes with rivets. We were interviewing somebody and at the end of the interview, we said, do you know how to use an angle grinder? And he was like, yep. And then um, like, perfect. And we gave him this angle grinder. This is like nine o'clock at night. Like, cool, can you just hang around for a bit? We've got to put this window in. And uh, so uh, an interview candidate uh, helped us install a window. <laughs> when you look at the fundamentals of what the product we built in the first place, it does apply to a lot of markets and a lot of different types of farming. And so, um, yeah, that impact. Now we are managing to scale that impact even broader. Um, and again, so that's a really important part of the mission is if we can't, we need to get to scale to have impact on an industry. You can't be positive for an industry if, it's, if you're only on like a handful of farms. The success of Holt has got Kiwi ingenuity written all over it. Okay, and that is not because we have anything super smart or super special. It's actually something very simple and basic and humble about it, that approach to it. Um, there, you go to Silicon Valley, you'll find a thousand times the brains and everything else. But when it comes to a gnarly, dogged push through these things that just seem impossible, we as farmers know exactly what that feels like. We'll have days where historically I would lose animals, the budget's going out of hand, the banker might be giving you a hard time, all of those things can pile on. We don't even think about the word failure, we just say things happen, farming happens. Yeah, we, we have a saying on the farm here that we don't have problems, we just have farming. Um, first office. Do you see that? That's maybe Twinkle. No. So would have been there. Yeah, you, you would have been about six. I think I was four. I remember doing yeah. calf club yeah. the year before. Yeah, yeah, you were four when you had Twinkle. I like how the AI thinks that granddad is yeah. me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Obviously, I look kind of like that. The house. Don't you? <laughs> and that's the renovation. <laughs> how many? cans of soda do you think you've got out of the halter fridge? Oh, well, probably how many? Well, one a week. Um, one a week? One <laughs> a week? 52 times seven years. One a week. <laughs> I, th I actually, deep down, I think most of the things are my idea. You know when you talk to people and then they say it's their idea? Yeah. You know, I don't mind that. Eh? I don't mind when I talk to your team. Like your son. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, then they'll go back to you, Craig, and go, oh, I've got this good idea. You know? I see. And, and, oh, I yeah, see. but it's kind of original. <laughs> I see. It's actually a, a very, very important trait where you can see an idea to someone and they don't realise you've given them the idea, and then they take it. I see. That's it's that's quite a good skill to have where you can. Um, and so Do it's you like that happened with Halter. Yeah, I think. Mm -hmm.